I did not see this coming. Lewis Hamilton is heading to Ferrari in 2025. <laughs> in a move that is akin to Dale Earnhardt Jr. moving from DEI to Hendrick Motorsports, this is the biggest shakeup we have seen in F1 history ever, potentially. What does this mean for the future of F1? And should Americans care? We're going to break it all down today on a very weird episode of Shifting Gears. Hi, hi, hi. Push it, push it, push it, push it. Check your bike. Hell yeah! What's the caution for? Can I not push it in? Stop anybody. Woo! Yeah! Oh, he's going. Woo! I am Alan Bailey. I still cannot believe this. It is seriously still blowing my mind. We normally talk NASCAR, but today we're talking Formula One. So do me a favor. If you're into NASCAR, go ahead and mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video. And of course, log on to ARNRace.com for the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. And yes, uh... I highly, 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 highly encourage you to go on ARNRace.com and check out an article that RJO wrote about this entire situation and how it's going to domino the entire F1 paddock for the 2025 season and how it affects it for the 2024 season. It's up on ARNRace.com right now. I'll go ahead and link it in the comments down below. It's an extraordinarily well-written article that kind of bullet points everything that's happened and everything that will happen so that a dumb NASCAR fan like me can understand everything. So, oh, I, I'm honestly blown away at this. Never thought it would happen. Don't get me wrong, though. I definitely saw this coming. I just never thought it would actually happen. I thought Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lewis Hamilton, was going to retire at Mercedes at some point. But that was coming sooner rather than later. And let's be blunt here. He has more years behind him than he does in front of him at this point. But they announced it. Ferrari announced that uh, Lewis Hamilton has signed a multi-year deal to drive for the organization uh, starting in 2025. And with new 2026 regulations, this could be a massive, massive power change, power struggle, which is desperately needed in the F1 paddock right now. I honestly thought the story of the week was going to be Formula One disrespecting Andretti rejecting their offer to join the grid. And it does feel like that. That felt like the storyline. F1 has always, always, always made it clear that they want Americans' money, but they didn't really want to be in America. And that definitely felt doubled down and more true this week with everything that happened with Andretti. And I'm not going to talk about that situation. That's a whole nother video. But the question now becomes, where does Mercedes go in 2025? I, I, Frederick Vesey is kind of the guy who's in the pipeline in F2 that is probably going to get the seat, more than likely. But at the same time, that feels like, you know, something that's not really ready to go. And maybe it will be at the end of the season. But for now, that just seems nowhere near as good as Lewis Hamilton. No one will be as good as Lewis Hamilton. It also sets up the power struggle of Toto Wolff and Lewis Hamilton butting heads throughout the entire 2024 season. I'm honestly very interested to see how Drive to Survive handles this situation because, damn, is it a huge domino that's going to affect the 2024 season, obviously, and everything that happens with it. Knowing that Carlos is on his way out and in a lame duck year, knowing that Lewis is in a lame duck year and on his way out, do those guys start to slip backwards on the grid and start to struggle on the racetrack, knowing that they're no longer potentially the number one drivers? Will we ever see Lewis Hamilton get another victory for Mercedes in 2024? I don't think so, because the question is still there. Can anyone beat Max Verstappen and Red Bull? No. I can sum up the entire 2023 and most of 2022 and probably 2024 F1 seasons in one go. Max Verstappen wins! Literally. That's literally what's been happening for the last two, three years in Formula One and probably will continue. For somebody who grew up as a NASCAR fan, I don't have a reason to watch Formula One right now. I did not have a reason to watch them in 2022. I really, really, really did not have a reason to watch them in 2023. 
And frankly, the situation with Lewis Hamilton and with Carlos at Ferrari definitely does give me reason to watch now in 2024. But at the same time, I'm not really motivated to get up at 3 a.m. local time, my time, to watch a race that more than likely Max Verstappen and Red Bull will win. Overwhelmingly, we saw Americans unfollow and cancel their subscriptions to the F1 app this week. And I don't have a reason to renew right now, truly. When the season starts, maybe I'm going to go ahead and get on into it and maybe watch some highlights and maybe watch a race or two live, but I'm definitely not going out to Miami, definitely not going to Texas, and really not paying for the shit show that was Las Vegas. Will we see Sir Lewis Hamilton get an eighth title either with Mercedes this year, highly doubtful, or with Ferrari down the road? Maybe. Honestly, I don't know. It depends on what happens after the manufacturers and teams get those 2026 regulations and where everybody stacks up in 2026, but for now, doesn't really feel like it. It's going to be so strange to watch Lewis Hamilton walk around the paddock in Ferrari red. I'm still not 100% used to that idea. I mean, uh, the names that RJO threw out in the article... Audi, Mercedes, Alpine, Aston Martin, Williams are all viable places for him to go. Uh, I think it would be extraordinarily interesting if he ends up at Mercedes in Lewis's old ride. And it does make for very tense uh, conversations and moments on the paddock in 2024. For that reason alone, I should probably watch and so should you. But at the same time, I'm in an I don't care kind of territory because there's better racing out there right now. Yes, I like F1. Yes, I respect F1. But at the same time, I'm sick of watching Max win. It's very similar to what NASCAR went through when Jimmy Johnson won five titles in a row. We all kind of lost interest and the ratings showed it. And F1 is going through something similar. Drive to Survive built up F1 in the United States as this powerhouse thing, and we saw that influx with now three races and the potential of a fourth coming to the United States down the road. It might be a little too much too quick, and now that kind of popularity is tapering down and F1 is on a downward slide, it's not dramatic, but it's there. And when you couple the Andretti situation and that disrespect with the blatant statement that was put out by them, it doesn't really help the situation at all. There was a poll that came out in the off season that showed that the younger demographic that is so desirable with uh, marketing people and with sports is kind of gearing towards the NASCAR audience. NASCAR, at least with the younger demographic, is more popular in the United States than Formula One. And that's kind of where this is all going right now. Maybe this whole situation can help F1 to boast those ratings this season, but it really doesn't feel like it yet. But again, this news is only a few hours old. I'm reacting to all of this just a few hours after everything came down, and it is still not really hit me at all. I seriously, even though we've seen photos of Lewis Hamilton in a Ferrari fire suit, it really hasn't clicked that it's real and that it's official. Seeing it on the Formula One social media pages still hasn't hit me that this is real. It feels like a gigantic hack and hoax that just is going to be proven to be incorrect. And there's a chance that could happen, but at the same time, it's not. It's official. It's happened. The memes are coming fast and furious. I'm a particular fan of the community one with the room on fire and Daniel Glover slash fans walking into the room on fire. But at the same time, official statements have been put out by Formula One, by Mercedes, by Ferrari. It's happening. Carlos also put out an official statement. This is happening. It has happened. It's coming. And we have the better part of a year to adjust to it. And as a non-diehard F1 fan, I'm going to struggle with it. I can only imagine what the diehard F1 fans are going through right now. So if you're a diehard F1 fan, leave it in the comments. What do you think about Sir Lewis Hamilton moving over to Ferrari? Where do you think Mercedes is going to go in 2025? Where do you think Carlos is going to go in 2025? And will anybody beat Max Verstappen in 2024 or in 2025 or in 2026 when the new regulations come out? 
let me know in the comments down below. And while you're there, make sure that you mash that subscribe button so that you do not miss a video in 2024. And of course, you can also log on to arnrace.com to keep up with the latest motorsports news. ARN, the Motorsports Authority. I want to thank you so much for watching. This is going to take some getting used to. I'm Alan Bailey. We'll see you at the track. Bye, gearheads.